Behind me, you will see some of the greats. You know, move a little bit here. San Antonio Gates, Justin Herbert, Joey Bosa, LaDainian Thompson. You'll see some of the Chargers greats that have performed in this amazing Chargers versus Raiders rivalry that we've seen evolve over a course of, you know, the entire NFL history, the history of these two great teams. And in the first matchup this season, the Raiders won in an extremely tight game. It actually was decided with zero seconds left on the clock. The Chargers got down to the one-yard line and dropped two jump ball opportunities to lose the game on a booth review of a catch that actually ended up being deemed incomplete. Will we see another instant classic like that in tonight's game? Thursday Night Football Preview is coming up right after this intro. It's Phil Flames, I'm with Mike on the mic yep. What's up, the brand new one time for one your time. mind He gave you fair warning Now it's time to smack him in the mouth With that raw sports talk from the town Sweet chin music to your favorite sportscaster Mike on the mic with sports talk that matters yes. Reppin' for the West, see the palms in the logo Mike on the mic, sports pod, let's go! I gave you fair warning, beware Smack him in the mouth what is up, everyone? Welcome to the Mike on the Mike Sports Podcast. I hope that you're as excited as I am for Thursday Night Football this week. This episode is going to be a preview of the Thursday night game we have coming up between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Las Vegas Raiders. The Chargers are traveling to Las Vegas to play the Raiders, and it's going to be a great game. The first game of the season, as I said, was an amazing game. Before we get into the breakdown, I'm going to go over the injury report. I'm going to go over the keys to victory for both teams, and I'm going to give a prediction of what's going to happen tonight on Thursday Night Football. Before we get into anything, please just drop down real quick, tap that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. It helps me out a lot, especially uh, for the upstart that we're doing here on YouTube. A subscriber count isn't too high. If you enjoy the show, after the show, drop a comment and let me know what you think and what you think is going to happen tonight. In the Thursday night football game. Actually, go ahead and drop your score predictions right now in the comment section. I'll give you a second to go ahead, hit subscribe, and drop your comment of who is going to win tonight. Ready? Go. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> All right, we're going to start off with the hometown Raiders for this one. Uh, looking at the injury report, looking at the injury report right now. Um, questionable, they have Nevin Lawson, who is actually a backup DB for them, and, and he's been in and out of the lineup with injuries all year. And the reason that that's important that he's questionable and that they get him out there is because of who is deemed out of the game already. If you look at it, Jonathan Abram, cornerback Damon, Damian Arnett, edge rusher Clinton Farrell, linebacker Nicholas Morrow, and wide receiver Henry Ruggs are all out for the game for the Raiders. Those are some big names and all starters on the defense are out for this game. It's going to be a big deal when it comes down to it because these are some of the key players for the Raiders on defense. And then you got Henry Ruggs on offense, uh, who you need to stretch that Chargers defense, which has been struggling to stop the pass over the last couple weeks. So that's the injury report for the Raiders. Let's get into the keys to victory. Keys to victory is brought to you by Friday Night Wars, the hottest debate show on YouTube. The link to it will be in the description. Me and Joe Morley go at it on a weekly basis. So let's look at the offensive keys first for the Las Vegas Raiders this week versus the Chargers on Thursday Night Football. As fun and no consequence that this game seems uh, to be as we prepare to get ready for the game tonight, it has a lot of consequences for the playoffs and for the draft order going into next season. For both teams, really. The Chargers sitting at the fifth overall, I believe, right now could drop back with the victory. The Raiders trying to sneak their way into the wild card picture and sneak their way into the wild card spot for the playoffs this year. Both teams really need certain things to happen, if you know what I'm saying. I'm not saying that anyone's tanking or anything like that. I don't think the Chargers are tanking. They're going to play their hardest tonight to try and win that game. But... Not too upset if we lose, right? As a Chargers fan, you can see the Chargers stuff all over the place in this video. A little bit disrespectful, huh? <laughs> so, in a game where we see, like, almost all the stars for both sides on this injury report, either as questionable or out, we may forget the implications. Gotta keep all of that in mind if you're the Las Vegas Raiders. And you know John Gruden is not forgetting how important this game is for the Raiders to win. The Raiders on offense need to focus on attacking the Chargers secondary. We saw Matt Ryan and Calvin Ridley single-handedly take out the trash last week versus this Chargers secondary. 
Matt Ryan did throw three awful interceptions, but those were all kind of on Matt Ryan. It wasn't really great play by the secondary. Uh, Jaleel Dye made one good diving interception, but the other two were pretty easy interceptions, things that I don't think Derek Carr is going to do tonight. The Chargers secondary is aging and has lost the step and has lost the aura the Jack boys had in previous years, in my opinion. Um, Nelson Aguilar may be a deep sleeper for fantasy playoffs this week. If you're really struggling to find someone, Nelson Aguilar should have a big week this week tonight on Thursday Night Football. He caught a big bomb against the Chargers last time they played, and it was for a touchdown over Casey Hayward. And we could see it happen again tonight, especially with, with Henry Ruggs out. You know that the, the Raiders got to be focusing on tacking the secondary. Who's the next man up? It's going to be Nelson Aguilar. As well as Derek Carr. He may be a sleeper for fantasy as well. I mean, I don't see him throwing three interceptions like Matty Ice did. And Matty Ice went for a lot of yards and, and a couple touchdowns. So I think Derek Carr could have a big game fantasy-wise as well if you think that's a good option for your team. And maybe your fantasy quarterback um, isn't quite playoff caliber, but you made the playoffs and you're here. Maybe Derek Carr is the guy to pick up to win you that championship. The Raiders offensively, typically when they're playing the Chargers, and we've seen it in previous years and this year even, would pound the rock down our throats with Jacobs in that O-line. But this week I think it's a little bit different. I think that they need to focus on attacking that secondary because Kenneth Murray really came coming into his own over the last couple weeks. I believe he had 10-plus tackles now in back-to-back -back weeks. Um, the Chargers have slowed down the run game back-to-back -back weeks. Uh, other than, I mean, you, you played the Patriots, so they're going to run the ball like crazy. Um, but for the most part, they slowed the Patriots down. The Patriots beat us on special teams, really is what it was. And our offense absolutely stunk that game. Um, but really, you got to focus on pressing the ball down the field, attacking these corners, uh, the Chargers aging corners. When you lose a step as a defensive back, it, it really hurts, man. And you cannot keep up with these receivers. And I expect to see Nelson Aguilar have another big day. I expect Nelson Aguilar to get at least one uh, big deep, a pass attempt, one big shot that he could score on and, and make your make a difference in your fantasy lineups. So that's kind of my keys for the offense. Look, let's look at the defensive keys for the Las Vegas Raiders. Chargers are a very unpredictable offense right now and not in a good way, in a very bad way, because they're very inconsistent with running and passing the ball. One week we'll see running be the primary game plan and it doesn't work. The next week we'll see passing being the primary game plan and it doesn't work. And the Chargers really just are in a bad way right now offensively and defensively, really. But with a lot of defensive key players out and a lot of key different defensive players on the injury report, I assume the Chargers are going to attack this Raiders defense with Herbert's arm and the dump downs to Austin Eckler, get him in some open space, try and break some tackles. So the key for the Raiders to me will come down to being disciplined in making the tackles and also, you know, pressuring Justin Herbert. You got to rally to Eckler. You got to rally to Balazs. You're going to have to rally to Tyron Johnson, who's, who's a speedster. You're going to have to rally these guys in these short underneath routes, Hunter Henry, uh, to make these tackles before they can do more damage with their legs. It's easier said than done, but Rod Marinelli, the new defense coordinator for the Raiders, has been around the league for, what, 25 years? So he knows what he's doing, man. It's not like they put in some new defensive coordinator that was a position coach his whole life. No, this guy knows what he's doing when it comes to coaching a defense I look to see a lot of pressure on Herbert I think that the the Raiders can do some damage especially when I go over the Chargers injury report and the offensive lineman that we're going to be missing I think they can do some damage by getting after Herbert forcing him to make decisions on the run make decisions on the fly make decisions that could put possibly cost the Chargers because at the end of the day he is a rookie as great as he's been this year he is a rookie and we've seen him make rookie mistakes that have cost us games honestly uh, and the Raiders got to get pressure on them also because this secondary is basically second string throughout the entire secondary. So you, you do not want to keep your guys in coverage for more than a few seconds at a time. You got to send the house. Max Crosby's got to get to Herbert uh, in this game for the Raiders to want to slow down this offense because if Herbert has time against that riddled sec secondary, uh-oh, you know what I mean? He's going to have a big day tonight, so we'll see what happens uh, there. That's kind of like what you're trying to watch out for on defense. Overall, looking at the Raiders' keys to victory, Gruden and the rest of the staff just need to get in the ear of these young players and let them know and remind them that this game is not a trap game. This game is not a game that is just we're just playing for fun because it's the end of the season and both teams are eliminated. Both teams are not eliminated from playoff contention. Gruden has to remember, remind these young players that are playing for the starters 
that are injured this week that this game has a lot on the line for the Raiders and their playoff hopes basically could go down the drain if they drop this game to the Chargers. That's something you got to say to your guys in the locker room before the game and all week during practice that you guys need to step up. Next man up mentality for the Las Vegas Raiders tonight, and it should be the model of the week. A new face needs to make a difference today for the Raiders to come out on top. As for the Chargers, look at the Chargers injury report and their keys to victory. Chargers injury report has a nice little stack of names on it as well, just like the Raiders does. Keenan Allen is questionable. He has a hamstring injury. I don't think he's going to play tonight. So no Keenan Allen. Mike Williams, wide receiver two, who usually would actually stand out when Keenan Allen is hurt. He also is probably not going to play tonight. He's listed as doubtful. Very unlikely that he plays tonight. He didn't play last week. Austin Eckler is questionable, but he will likely play. Brian Bulaga is out, and that's the offensive lineman I was talking about. He's the best guy on the offensive line right now. Trey Turner being the second best, but he's been struggling since he come back. I think he's battling injury as well. Um, but having Brian Belaga out, Max Crosby is going to have a field day with this porous Chargers O-line, especially when they're missing Brian Belaga. Uchenna Nwosu is questionable. Denzel Perryman is doubtful. Uh, he didn't play last week. I don't think he's going to play this week. And Nasir Adderley is doubtful. I don't think he's playing either. So there's a nice, healthy chunk of injuries for the Chargers as well going into this game. Some offensive keys for the Chargers first. Herbert is three touchdown passes away from breaking the rookie passing touchdown record, and I think he gets it tonight with the Raiders secondary so beat up. Um, I think Herbert could have three touchdowns tonight passing. Uh, we'll see. I think he definitely, for sure, you can, you can pretty much lock it in that he at least ties the record tonight and probably breaks it next week. The Chargers have to feed Austin Eckler with all these guys out, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, all these guys injured, key players to this offense. You're going to see Austin Eckler get a lot of touches tonight, and congratulations to those who have him in the playoffs right now. I have him, but I got eliminated from the playoffs last week. Fantasy was rough for me this year because I was doing 20 different things at once. Fantasy kind of took a back seat. Next year, we'll be back to any of my fantasy opponents that may be watching this. Good luck because you know what a monster I am in fantasy football. Another sleeper wide receiver for your fantasy lineup could be Tyrone Johnson who is uh, usually our wide receiver three or wide receiver four. He had a career day last week with Keenan Allen in the lineup, um, but with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams out tonight, he is the next man up. Johnson is our wide receiver one tonight. Very speedy guy, and he affects the game with his speed. Uh, even on, on the underneath routes and stuff, I expect to see him get you know five to ten touches tonight, and I, I sincerely think five to ten touches for Tyron Johnson, a guy you probably never heard of before. Um, is a realistic goal. So if you're looking for an emergency wide receiver, him and Nelson Aguilar I think are very good options for your fantasy lineup in the playoffs this week. They could be the difference maker. And if you're doing fan duel lineups, that might be a big one right there. No one's really thinking about that, I don't think. And these guys both could have touchdowns. Both could have, you know, 60 to 80-yard games, in my opinion. You know, and, and Austin Eckler as well, and he's a must-start every week for the rest of the, the season. You know, he's going to get 20 touches tonight. It's ridiculous. He's probably going to have 12 carries and, and 10 receptions, which is going to be ridiculous, but it's going to happen. Uh, with Bulaga out, the Chargers have to get the ball out of Herbert's hands fast. So I expect a bunch of checkdowns to Eckler and shorter passes to Hunter Henry in the collection of the speedsters we have in this wide receiver core. We're talking Tyron Johnson. We're talking Jalen Guyton. We're talking Joe Reed possibly getting some touches. KJ Hill possibly getting some touches tonight. Uh, we're, we're really hurt at receiver tonight. So expect those backups to try and step it up. These guys are all speedster type receivers are not complete receivers i think tyron johnson is the most complete out of the group so if you're going to try and look at someone for the chargers offense tonight hunter henry austin eckler um and tyron johnson that that's the guys for fantasy football uh, and that's the guys that are gonna have to step up to win this game and dominate this raiders injury riddled defense it's kind of an interesting story because the Chargers offense has a lot of injuries and the raiders defense has a lot of injuries so it might wash out and and we'll still see a great game tonight I think Justin Herbert is throwing it at least 40 times tonight. With the entire Raiders secondary injured, the Chargers have to attack through the air, just like the Raiders got to attack the Chargers through the air. I think Jay Herb is throwing it at least 40 times tonight. That's why I think he's going to break the record tonight. I think he's going to have three touchdowns uh, in this game, passing. Especially if it's a good game or if the Chargers are playing from behind. To close out the Chargers offensive focus, the main point here will be getting the ball out of Justin Herbert's hands quickly. I can't reiterate that enough. Our O-line is awful, and we're down our best offensive lineman who isn't even really, you know, wouldn't be a best offensive lineman on the Raiders' offensive line. And the Raiders got to get after 
uh, Herbert. So Herbert has to know it's coming. The Chargers have to know it's coming. Uh, so there, there you go. You got to get the ball out of Herbert's hands quick. Otherwise, this offense is going to struggle tonight, in my opinion, even with all the injuries. If they don't get the ball out of Herbert's hands quick and we let Max Crosby and, and company start taking over this game, it's going to be a rough night for the Chargers offense like we've seen in previous weeks. The Chargers offense was super hot up until about two weeks ago when that Patriots game happened. That Patriots embarrassment happened. Um, and even against Atlanta last week and their poorest defense struggled a little bit. You know, only 20 points and and uh, a lot of drives got killed around midfield because of penalties and, and, and other stuff. Let's look at some of the defensive keys for the Los Angeles Chargers defense to focus on trying to slow down this Raiders offense. The Chargers defense had a lot of hype, a ton of hype. In the offseason with the moves that they made, Chris Harris Jr., Linval Joseph, adding to an already, you know, top 12, top 10 defense that, that it was the year before. Um, but what's left of that hype has been ruined by poor scheme, poor play calling, injuries, and just an aging secondary. Our guys are just too old. And let me tell you, I used to play defensive back. Uh, back in my playing days, as I should say, about six months ago is when I finally hung up the cleats. Uh, when you lose a step as a defensive back, especially in the NFL, the wide receivers are going to start toasting you because there's nothing you can do when the guy is just purely that much faster than you and has you know three steps on you. So when you lose a step as a DB, it goes downhill, and it goes downhill very fast. That's why we've seen elite DBs like Darrell Revis and, and, and others go from being the best DB in the game to, you know, retired in a matter of years. And it seems like it goes by in the blink of an eye. That's just the way it is as a defensive back. Your your window's super small, similar with the running backs. Once you lose that step, it's all over because the athletes are too good in the NFL for you to be slower than them by, you know, two or three steps. The Chargers got to get dirty. They got to send more than four almost on every play of this game, in my opinion. You got to send five. I, th I look to see... Kenneth Murray blitzing more than he ever has since his NFL career started this year. Uh, on a majority of plays, I hope that they send Kenneth Murray along with the four defensive linemen because you got to help the secondary out. You gave Matt Ryan so much time last week that him and Calvin Ridley just cooked us up. We got super lucky that he made bonehead mistakes. Otherwise, the Chargers would have lost that game, let's be honest. They were driving to put Young Hoku in position to kick the game-winning field goal at the end of that game. Matt Ryan threw that bonehead interception. Um, and that's what ended up costing the Falcons the game. So it was kind of the choke bowl back and forth. And I, we could see Derek Carr and this Raiders team, if you give Derek Carr time, hit a lot of passes downfield on our secondary, which is struggling this year. The secondary was once a strength for the Chargers, you know, known and dubbed as the Jack Boys all the way back to the Eric Weddle days, but now it has become our weakness with the Derwin James injury, Casey Hayward aging, Chris Harris Jr. aging, Desmond King trade. All of a sudden you find a, a very shaky secondary of what was once, you know, one of the best in the league. The Chargers defense has to get after Carr, force a mistake or two, and let Herbert cook with a few extra possessions. Overall, the Chargers... Best hope is to just let Justin Herbert be great in this game, open up that offense, and attack the injury-riddled secondary. We have seen Herbert get reeled in a little bit the last couple weeks, you know, with the return of Austin Eckler not putting up these crazy games anymore as far as Herbert goes. Um, but it's not a bad thing necessarily that they reeled him in a little bit because, you know, Eckler is one of our best players, maybe our best threat on offense uh, that's not named Keenan Allen to make plays happen out of the backfield. The game shouldn't be on the rookie's shoulders anyways. He shouldn't have to throw for four touchdowns, 350 yards every week for the Chargers to be successful. We have other players in this offense. We have Hunter Henry. We have Austin Eckler. You know, we typically would have Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. It does not have to be on our rookie quarterback's back. But in this game, I think the Chargers need to open up this playbook again. I think the Chargers need to open up the play calling. I think they're going to need to attack this injury-riddled Raiders secondary. I expect to see a lot of checkdowns, but I also expect to see some shots taken by the Chargers in the right moments. The Chargers coaching staff, play calling, time management, and, and everything to do with the coaching decisions in what will be a close game could cost us big as we've seen week after week. We see it on a weekly basis, a decision-making blunder that costs the Chargers the game or at least puts the Chargers at risk of losing every single game. So the, the, the coaching staff needs to tighten up in these couple days we had to get ready and, and really know what they're doing in these two-minute scenarios before half and at the end of games. If not, we're going to lose this game because it's going to be a tight game. It's going to come down to that halftime drive to close it. It's going to come down to that uh, you know last drive in the game to close it, whether you're on offense or defense. It's going to come down to that tonight. My overall prediction, 
for the Chargers versus the Raiders tonight on Thursday Night Football. I think the Chargers play the Las Vegas Raiders tough tonight like they do every time they match up. Every time they match up with any division opponent, the AFC West games are always instant classics and fun to watch. I think both offenses open up their offense and take some shots, so it's going to be exciting to watch if you like seeing those deep throws down the field by Derek Carr and Justin Herbert. Whoever lands those shots will win this game, So it, whether it's Herbert or Carr. And what will surely be a tight game, in my opinion, this week, I fear the Chargers are set up for another complete flub, coaching-wise, on primetime television. I think it is going to be a shootout. I think we see uh, early on, we see Herbert open up that offense and, and attack the Raiders' secondary. My favorite Herbert game thus far was the game that they had versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tom Brady. Even though he lost the game and even though he threw a costly pick, you know, to lose the game in the crunch time, the Chargers opened it up and they let it fly in that game and attacked the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in that first half. Herbert had a couple deep touchdowns in that game. I think he had two 50-yard plus touchdowns in that battle that they went with uh, versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That is what they need to do tonight to win this game. They need to attack the Raiders. Uh, you know, bring him up, hit him with Eckler early on in the game, you know, that the underneath routes, hit him with Hunter Henry in those underneath routes, and once they come up, start slinging that thing deep. That's what the Chargers are going to need to do to win this game. The Chargers coaching staff has given me zero, no, zero reason to believe they will execute a good game plan, especially on a short week to prepare. The Raiders need this win a lot more than the Chargers need this win. The Raiders in this playoff picture trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. With that in mind, I think we see a great back and forth game, much like the first one this season. The Chargers have lost to nine straight division opponents, and it seems like we have a streak like that you know, every year. <laughs> the Chargers win a game against a division opponent, and then they go on another 10-game streak of losing to division opponents, and I think that streak continues tonight. As painful as it hurts me to predict it, um, I'm taking the Raiders to win 34-24 to on primetime in front of the whole world. That's it for the Thursday Night Preview. Let me know if you like these short little videos. I'm going to do more of them in the future. Drop a comment real quick what you think is going to happen in the game tonight if you haven't already. Uh, it's going to be a good one, I think. I, I mean, it's hard to follow up that, you know, Baltimore-Cleveland game on Monday Night Football. But I still think it's going to be a great game between these two teams. They always play each other tough. It's fun to see Herbert on primetime. It's fun to see the Chargers on, on primetime. And with all the injuries and everything that's going on, I'm really excited to see some of these younger players play. See what the Raiders have, you know, as far as depth in that secondary. See what the Chargers have as far as depth in their receiving core. I think both teams have a lot to show tonight. Both teams are playing for a lot tonight, uh, whether it's draft position or it's for the playoffs. So I think it's going to be a great game. And, you know, John Gruden is going to bring the Raiders ready to play in this game. And Justin Herbert and the Chargers offense is going to come ready to play as well. So we'll see how it goes. Of course, I'm rooting for the Chargers. I got the Raiders winning as my prediction, you know, my smarter prediction. My brain tells me Raiders. My heart tells me Chargers. Let me know what you guys think. Once again, drop a subscribe. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you on the next one. It's Phil Flames. I'm with Mike on the mic. What's up the brand new one time for your mind? He gave you fair warning. Now it's time to smack him in the mouth with that raw sports talk from the town. Sweet chin music to your favorite sports master. Mike on the mic with sports talk that matters. Reppin' for the West, see the palms in the logo. Mike on the mic, sports pod, let's go! I gave you fair warning, beware. Smack him in the mouth.